Oh no. Go Jeepers. My. I made the mistake of telling everybody that we were live way earlier than I intended to. So nothing on my my thing is apparently set up. Oh jeez. Okay. Hurry. Well, it it's already whoa, Jesus Christ. That was your end? Yeah. Okay, hold on. Okay. Hi, dragon. What did you do? What did you do? What was that noise? That's just Pando. Oh, that's just Pando. Yep. Okay. And. Oh, wait, there I am. Yeah. What the fuck? Where am I? Oh, we had our models. I don't think we set up my PNG. Are you still fussing at the cat? That's a thing within Discord. Oh, I have no idea. Good, I'm glad. I, oh my goodness, I like Streamlabs. You like Streamlabs? Yeah. Why? Why do I like Streamlabs? I don't know. I genuinely do not know. You're crazy. Also, after you're done ooh, Whoops. with fixing this, I need to ask you to fix my Discord audio. So people can hear Mama in the game. Oh, right. Yes. Okay. Like you're good on your end, are you? No, because I still need me. No, no, I meant audio-wise. I don't know. Mom talks. Bragging? I don't even see it. That's a no. You're going to get the cat hot. You're the you're the one that needs to deal with the repercussions, so you know. Have fun. Mm-hmm. Question mark. Yeah. Sorry. You're good. Audio input capture? Uh, no. I want to apologize for everyone that is waiting. Just give us a bit. We are working this out together because we're both streaming on my computer. So we want to see how this works. Yeah. It, it It's going to be interesting. Mama Sprecken. I just put out catnip for the cats. Merry Christmas. Oh, see application audio. Yep, that's the one. Meowie Christmas. Audio. Yes. yes. Meowy Christmas. Meowy Christmas. And now I can add myself. Yep. Some you can? Face. Maybe. Look. We're going with that I can. I didn't want that, but thank you. What were you wanting I to do? I to kiss your cheek. I can't wait. Thank you. There you go. <laughs> Amusingly, um, the girls have decided that they don't really care to go out further than the front porch. And so they are doing this thing of in the doorway, either inside the screen or outside the screen, but basically in the doorway. Lucifer's the only one that's actually going out. And he is he is going out of my sight, but which is not he is, great. Which I'm not crazy about, but he does. I mean, like in less than a minute, when I go out and yell Lucifer, oh, I need you to come home. I need to see you. He's, he's, you know, he'll appear from somewhere. 
he and a run. I feel like he knows that if he doesn't, then uh, we will not be happy with him. Oh, for a, for a while there, I was not letting them out at all. And when they would complain about it, I would be like, no, you ran away. You didn't come home when I said to. No. And we didn't know where you were. And if you can't come home when you're told, then the door stays shut. And honestly, I think Lucifer is smart enough that he's figured it out. That he has figured out that the reason there the door got shut is that we couldn't you know, he didn't show up when well, he was we needed called. him to, yeah. Yeah. I can wait. Okay. Well, now we've got everything set up. Hello, Decca. How are you, darling? Hello, Val. How are you? Uh, to those on Sarzen, I'm so sorry that you missed out on the cat story. We love you anyway. If you want to check it out, you can watch the VOD for my channel. Woo. <laughs> Which I will literally be posting them right after stream. Yep. So. Alrighty. And now we get to watch Mama play one of her favorite games while discussing the kittens. <laughs> well, actually, okay. Go to the bus stop. I take the bus for stream like. Okay, be a side quest. I'm trying to remember where I was. Hi, Check Space the old Snapple Mill Factory for Snapple Cakes Marvin wants. Oh, okay. Right. So I'm here for Snackle Cakes. Yay, Snackle Cakes. Thank you so much for the nine months sub, Rem. You absolute sweetheart. Thank you, thank you, thank you. How are you doing? Decca would like to know how all of us are doing and to inform us that they heard the cat story. So, yay. Um, mm -hmm. I'm doing okay. How are you two? Alive. Yeah, that feels about right. You, Mama? I, I'm okay. I, um, I had some good things and some bad things happen. I don't know if it's appropriate to share on, uh, on stream. So uh, I would say that the good thing is the bad thing. Uh, yeah. Okay. I'm also going to make it so that you do not, uh, bounce dim. Okay. Bouncing is fine, but when you dim and I'm the one that's talking, it looks a little weird. Just... <laughs> could we possibly close Opera just in case? Yeah. I mean, knock well, on, knock on whatever this is made out of. Pa we particle board. We haven't had the computer well, crash hold on. in days, but I want to, like, avoid it if we could. Yeah, which makes sense. Besides, we need to... Uh, I mean, we're looking pretty good as far as everything goes, but... Yeah. Yeah. Hello, Soul Reaper 77X. How are you, darling? I always feel like that's an Avenged Sevenfold thing, but... Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's where my brain goes. Okay. You put your hand I probably out. shouldn't have gone in through the front door. No, Why? probably not. I don't know what's going on, but probably not. Going through the front door is never good. How is everyone? I'm alive, Rem. How well, it was a 50-50 chance to squirm in through the loading dock or to go in through the front door. Okay? If I get murdered, I will squirm in through the loading dock. It's fine. Wait. What? Uh, it looks like the abandoned factory has been occupied by one of Ocean Gang's uh, street hooligans, namely the Doughboys. I love the Doughboys because they're so ridiculous. Uh -huh. Hanging out here in their leather jackets and white aprons, bragging about their sourdough starters and using wor rude words like focaccia and son of a brioche. These are the um, descendants of Breadwood. Yes. Without a doubt. I'm sure. Or they were, until you made that huge racket getting in here. <laughs> now they're staring now they're staring knives at you and also pointing knives at you. And they're bread knives, which are serrated, so you don't really don't want to get stabbed with one. Oops. Should have What if I do? Back. They don't know my life. Hey guys, I can I can still leave through the door and see about the other way in. Try it. 
That's all she needed. <laughs> Squirm through. Oh no. What is this? They're aware either way. Or is it Huge because amount of hand? loose sugar. I think they're oh. aware either way. Uh okay. Squirm through. I guess I gotta fight him. Right? They ain't got to know, sis, space. Uh, the dev boys are clearly less aggressive than other street gangs and they're glaring at you and muttering angrily at you instead of already having attacked you. However, it's also clear that you aren't getting past them without a fight and I want to see what's in the office. Ouch. Okay. Let's see. Let's see what these got. Dig the tosser. Only got five hit points. Five hit points. Nine hit points. Sling. Ugh. Star is stepping away for just a moment. He will be right back, but uh, Odin is in need of a vet visit, and so he has to go make a vet visit because we oh, okay. forgot to earlier today. Oh dear. He won. They should call you too much soup because you just spoiled those cooks. Mm. <laughs> okay. 5 XP, freshly baked roll, and clammy dough blob. Okay. Wait, what? Yeah. They really bet everything on these terrible snack cakes. Okay. Office? This must be the boss's office since it's the only office. Hey, shouts one of the remaining dough boys. Get away from that door, you muffin forker. Muffin okay. forker? Oh my gosh, that is a worthy insult. Who forks muffins? It's a little strange that I'm not answering that question. <laughs> uh, okay, rephrase. That... Who the hell eats a muffin with a fork? I believe that they... <gasps> You do not! What is oh, wrong with that you? This group of doughboys didn't immediately attack you when they were roughing up the other group of them. Maybe they don't like each other very much. Fight these ones too. Alright. Ooh. Ow. Alright. Check all of their health. See if any of them have higher health than the others. Ah. Uh, they okay. all have higher health. Okay. They all have about 9 to 10 health. So. Ew. Remove bleeding. Fire. No. Whoa. No. Nah. Damage to all enemies. Toss. Damn. <clears throat> You're impressive, Mama. I love you. Those dumb boys in the dust. Thank you. I think it's fun. <laughs> huh. Okay. Is it wrong to eat cereal with a fork? Yes. Fire power. Absolutely. Have you ever eaten cereal with a fork, Mama? Okay, here's something you should know. When I was at summer camp, we used to have these challenges where you would have a meal and you would get one utensil. You would get either a fork, a spoon, or a knife. The knives are always fucking useless. Knives were mostly useless. Okay? Okay. You've got to eat your entire 
array of food for the day with the one utensil. Spoons were lucky. Forks were okay. Those poor souls who got knives used their fingers a lot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bet. Okay. Now, here's the kick. Mm -hmm. That was for the campers. The counselors got things like soup ladles and tongs. <laughs> what? And Why? What? What? Okay. Because it was funny. So, if you ask me, have you eaten such and such with a fork? Yes. Whatever it is. <laughs> yes. I, have, I, I know how to eat ice cream with a fork. <laughs> okay, but that one's fine. I've done that before. <laughs> Actually, it was one of those little cups, and the trick was you take your fork and you go around the edge. Yeah. And then you, you stab you stick it. The, you stab it and you turn it into a popsicle. Yeah, exactly. Well, it's not raw teeth cereal with a fork. Maybe morally. Maybe what? morally? <laughs> Star says, is it wrong to eat cereal with fork? No, maybe morally. I eat soup with fork. That's fine. Hence why the fork is useful. Yes, exactly. I pour milk before the cereal. That's just... That doesn't eh. make sense. I only agree with that if you're going to get a second bowl of cereal. Yes. Hi, also, Calvian. Would anyone like to hear the fucking bullshit I just went through? Oh, God, what? We have to go to the vet tomorrow. Why? Because they're refusing to fill Odin's prescription. Hi. Because, like, they didn't, they didn't even tell me why. Because I ordered Odin's medication off of pet meds. Pet yes. meds, pet meds got in contact with my vet, mm -hmm. and my vet's like, oh, he needs to call us. And I called them, and they didn't pick up. So I don't know why they're refusing it, other than the fact they want the money for the prescription and not giving it to pet meds. But yeah, I have to go to the vet tomorrow and yell at people. Jesus Christ. I hate this vet. <laughs> this vet deserves to have jalapeno hands for the rest of time. Oh my god, I love that. Milk before is a sin. Milk before cereal is kind of sinful. Yes. I agree. The only, I will, ha I have had milk before cereal, but that is because it was my second bowl. Yeah, exactly. That I can agree with. Your turn, mama. What? To continue with the game or to put in your two cents about milk before cereal? Okay, I usually have oatmeal, so I have to put the milk in to measure it correctly. Fair. Okay, oatmeal because is I'm... not cereal. We're talking like Cat and Crunch. Oatmeal is. Who the heck? Would oatmeal is some cereal. No, it what is are you not. On? Yes, it is. It's just not it normal is. cereal. It is. No, it is it... not. It's oats. But yes, for for like Captain Crunch, if I'm not eating it dry, which I do, yes, I um, I I pour the cereal in the bowl and then add the milk. Which is the opposite of what I do with tea. If I'm going to put milk into tea, I, I add the milk after the tea, not before. Just in case there's anybody in chat that wants to, to fight about that. I say there is no wrong way, do you? Milk before cereal is like getting dressed hat first. It's immoral. I agree with Decca. You know, here's the thing. Sometimes I don't if even you... use milk. I just use chopstick. Um. Yes. Well, if you're although not... I don't usually use chopsticks, I use my fingers because I'm I'm a barbarian. I wouldn't use. <laughs> you use orange juice and you see Okay, I'm beginning to think you are trolling me. No, Who people... me? Space. No, some people do put orange juice. Yes. Calbian, at that point, I do. It sounds like a Jumanji hack. Oh, God. <laughs> what if milk is in the cereal box and cereal is in the milk carton? What then? That sounds like a Jumanji trick. 
considering Mother that I agree. Considering that we're in the U.S. and I finally bought the first carton of milk that I have like ever had that was a box of milk. Um, a couple of a couple of days ago, actually, I guess it was the day you left, Lita. Rude. Because, I was like, oh, I've not seen it. What? Yeah. Well, see, what happened was we needed groceries when you left, and I'm like, okay, well, I'll just stop at the store after I drop you off at the airport, right? Mm -hmm. It is lovely, Decca. Agreed. Yeah, so what happened? I'm not waiting in Walmart parking lot for two hours before they open. Mm. And they opened an hour before everybody else. Damn. So what? There, <laughs> so I stopped at the, the gas station, which is open 24-7. Um, and they had a brand of milk that I am unfamiliar with in a half a gallon, and it was fine. But it was also in a box, mm. which I'm not used to. Oh, interesting. I love the 1% milk. Sometimes whole, but I'm lactose intolerant, so I need lactate. That makes sense. I only drink whole milk. Otherwise, it tastes a little too watery for my taste. Which, speaking of, Mama, there is a, like reusable carton i want to put my milk specifically in why because it looks like a regular carton of milk except it says goth milk and it has strawberries that are skulls on it correct i have seen it And she's like, whatever, fine. Well, oh, here's here's my that. thing. It's like, yeah, that's really cute, but I don't know. This is a philosophy thing. Of do we really need that? Considering and I like to drink out of the carton in the middle of the night. Yes, we do. I love you. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I love you. Well, the, the other thing is. Um, and this, the, hmm. I'm, I'm looking at things, uh, any more of, yes, I could buy that. And yes, that's cute. But do I need it? Should I get that? Not can I, should I? You're, you need to get over the nihilist thing. No. We'll, we'll discuss it sometime off stream. That's not what needs to happen. That's true. That's fair. Okay. Drink orange <clears throat> juice after brushing but your yeah, teeth. I, That's, I, I am, that is morally corrupt. I'd rather die, Space. Yeah. Um. Then put, then put orange juice on cereal? No. no. Then to drink orange juice after brushing your teeth. Oh. Well, your orange juice isn't going to taste good, and you're going to have to brush your teeth all over again, so it's better to drink it before, truthfully. Yeah. Say um, goodbye to your enamel. Why? Because brushing your teeth and then drinking orange juice and then having to brush your teeth again. Doesn't hurt you. Or shouldn't. Brushing your teeth does not remove the enamel. She's right, Leaving. You know. Leaving acid on your teeth will remove the enamel over time. Yes, but brushing your teeth frequently will fuck up your gums, not the enamel. And only if you scrub too hard. Correct. So, like, with my toothbrush, I wouldn't want to do that. But, like, with a regular toothbrush, as long as you're gentle on your around your gums, you should be fine. Oh, there's the viewer count. I've been looking for it this entire time. <laughs> Yes, yeah, so it's on the upper right. Um, Naturally blonde, I apologize. You're fine. Speaking of, of of fun cups and sad things, though, Mom, guess what happened earlier this morning? Oh, no! What? You know that cup I really, really love with the it? Like, I love it so much, I fixed it with Gorilla Glue when it broke? Yep. My father-in-law broke it again and threw it away. <laughs> Truthfully, that's what should have happened to begin with. No, you can't help me play the game. I'm speak into the speak into the microphone. That was mean, Mom. No, we need to get you another one, baby. 
you can't repair it very well. I mean, not incorrect. What? Speak into the microphone. He says no. What the hell is this? Oh. You're standing right there. Come on. Thank you for kisses. Talk to me. Come on, talk to me. You want him to, so no. Yeah. He's, he's literally standing with his mouth right next to the microphone. Blatt. No, it was not. Sorry, Calvin. Now you want water milk? Skim. Skim milk is just vile. I mm -hmm. had to drink skim milk for a couple of years because, uh... That was a trauma story I didn't mean to unlock in my brain. <laughs> oh, no. Because why? You'll, you're not for stream yeah, noted. No, okay. Definitely not. Yeah, I. If it makes you feel better, one of the reasons that she grew up with whole milk is because I had to drink skim milk the whole time I was growing up. And I did some research into skim versus whole milk and the components of weight and what have you. And it's actually. Whole milk is more satisfying and better for you. And it's like, okay. Okie dokie. It, it not only tastes better, it's like real butter versus margarine. It not only tastes better, but the Mom, less that, Mom, what? Guess what my husband eats on his toast? Margarine, I'm we've, sure. We've literally had this discussion earlier this week. Yeah, I was fussing at him because he basically eats vegetable oil on... Vegetable Jesus. margarine is not as bad as the original oleo. That was... If you put oleo out in the field, ants will not touch it. Oh Birds will not eat it. It will sit there because it isn't actually food. Oh my god. Mm -hmm. That's insane. Did you know that? No. Yes. Also, I am jealous, Calvi, and I would like caramel macchiato. Also, same, yeah. Yeah, that's that's the thing about the um, the the imitation butter. Don't eat that; it's not food. Damn. No, well, <laughs> read your labels because if it's like vegetable margarine, it's fine. Like, um, I, you, you eat country crock? Yeah. It's the not chemical... great, but it's not going to. It, it's food, technically. The the chemical processes that they put the stuff through to make it look and spread like butter, it doesn't taste like butter. Don't tell me it does. Does not. Um, are, are less healthy than just eating the regular butter. The problem is, I don't know the difference because I was raised on... Country crock. Yeah. Yes. If you want, at some point, we'll grab the same loaf of bread and we'll do one slice <gasps> with butter and one slice with country country crock that would be Science a good idea yes except except if he, star is still living with his parents if they will not buy butter do not do that until he moves out and can make his own choices correct because once you do that there is no going back yeah because every time that i'm like ooh, toast with butter yes please and then i get country crock i'm always just like oh uh. <laughs> And then I just stomach the piece and go, well. Yeah. Well, we have butter here, and that's the only time we ever have butter. Is when Lee is visiting. Yeah. And they... I get dirty glares from his mom to begin with, and it's like, I can't help that I'm... I eat like an autistic. Yes. Like, I understand. But, yeah. Don't... Don't... Don't swap star over into things that they're that are not available to them at this point Correct. yes yes we know butter tastes better okay don't expose <laughs> hello Hi. don't expose him to butter we heard until that he can have butter. we heard that yes he, he has an opinion i guess <laughs> he agrees <laughs> that was so loud oh he won't need either one that was loud as fuck yeah you will he loves butter or he loves melted butter 
I think it's funny that my grandmother's cat loves Lita now. Oh, yeah. We were walking out of the bathroom. Um, because we were brushing our teeth together this morning. And mm -hmm. his cat's laying on his uncle's bed, and I'm just like, kitty! And he's like, you want to go pet her? Or you want to go pet Abraham? And I'm like, yeah. So I walk in, and I, I like, pet the cat for a little bit, and I, I move so that I'm not, like, standing on any of his uncle's things. And the cat thinks I'm about to leave and goes, no! You're staying, right? This cat reportedly doesn't like anybody. Really doesn't. Apparently likes me. He's picky. It's a sundry cat. Very sundry. Um, but the thing is, is I know cats and I know how to pet a cat. That reminds me, Star. Would you tell Alicia um, that there's another chapter of Smitten Kitten? Yes, I will. Thank you. She okay. will be very happy. I'm sure. It's a short chapter, but um, it only got cut off because that was a good cliffhanger and there will be more possibly tomorrow, <laughs> depending on how much time I have to write. Yeah. I do still have lessons tonight after after we get off stream. Oh, your Korean stuff? Yeah. Yeah, just because I haven't gotten into the academy doesn't mean that um, I'm not still trying. Well, hello. He's screaming loud enough to get picked up on the mic now. Yeah. He wouldn't have had to say anything quite so loudly if he'd actually done it while he was standing on top of the mic. Yeah, but, you know. Yeah, I know. <clears throat> okay. What the who the hell of are you? Halva isn't really a bread. Ugh, fine. Hold Get up. the halula out of here then. What is halula? It's a sort of a chili and flat flatbread. I feel like you're really scraping the bottom of the biscuit barrel with that one. Get out of here right now. I'm going to beat the crap out of you. Oh, that's much better. What are you doing with all these piles of dough? Not that it's any of your business, but I'm perfecting my recipe for bread golems. Soon, I'm going to be running this town. Oh, yeah? You and what army? Me? Me and an army of bread golems? Were you not listening? No. Clearly. <sighs> I probably shouldn't let you get away with this. You'll be lucky to get away with all your arms and legs. Rise, my minions, rise! He waves his arms wildly, and the bread dough around him congeals into two large bread golems. Uh-oh. Dang. Dante sent me to help. Oh, how nice. Yeah. Hey. Well, let's see what we got. Um, five sleeves. Okay. What are you doing? Okay, shushing. Okay. Why is your bird flickering? Oh, the health bar because somebody's gonna hit him next round. No. Sad face. There we go. Um. Oh, and swat. Nothing to do. Shoot. I love broads in space. Broads are great. Bratwurst? Yeah. I don't know. Oh, I got Sabata's pants and then the enriched flower. I didn't think you would because they're like hot doggy. Sausagey. Oh, yeah, no. Uh uh. That's a nope for me baby recipe okay let's see what the dough baby recipe said read this is a recipe for the one of those little dough glob familiars that oh boys have it calls for three cups of mana enriched flour mixed up with something called sandwich cream and baked in an arcane oven 
Well, I have the three cups of mana and rich flour, but I don't have sandwich cream yet. Mm. Uh, Close. Okay. The melting mind. I would appreciate it if that would stop showing up over there. Yeah, I don't know why it keeps trying. The melting mind. I mean, that sounds cool. Mind melting. Yeah. Okay. I'm totally um, not going to commit chaos and just drink my juice. Please uh, do not commit chaos. Chaos is not appreciated. What what kind of juice? And if it is not happy juice, you are wrong. Correct. Okay. No. Everything. <clears throat> okay. It's a snack of cake. Single chew. Why, why, why do I want that? Did you have the trouble of using... Oh, God. No, lovely. I bet you anything you're gonna jump when, when you are wearing this. Bet me. It's happy juice. Happy juice! Happy juice! Happy juice for the win. Can be to further upgrade Parmesan pencil. Uh, okay, not right now. Um, the melting mind. Let's go ahead and read this. Um, you read the weird book, including all the several page long footnotes and the parts in different typefaces and orientations and the parts written in languages you don't speak. You can't help but think that there's more to the story than this, though. Maybe you should read it again. It's 75 XP. Do it. What do you think? All right. Ooh, read it again. You read the book a second time and pick up a few new weird details. You still don't understand most of it, though. Your subconscious must be must just be a bad writer. I'll have you know my subconscious is an excellent writer. My melt has been upgraded. I want you have to have pumpkin cat also. Because I want pumpkin cat too. You decide you've had enough and melt the book with your mind. Okay. I like all animals, therefore pumpkin cat and Odin. Junk mail. Junk. What? Don't have a letter opener. Okay. You okay, baby? Yeah. Tick. Yeah. Ooh. How much XP do you have? Uh, I don't know. I'll hold on. I'm not. I'm not sure now. You? Unspent XP eleven. Damn. I had eight. I had eighty six. What? a lot. Basic skills. Mm. Oh, thank you, babe. Yeah. Okay. I want pumpkin I gotta get, cat. I'm I gotta get I gotta get more XP. Uh, why do you have pumpkin cat also? I hope Odin's okay. Odin, it will be okay. The medication from earlier is I think for tick and fleas. Yeah, it's just Pump a preventative. Yeah, pumpkin cat is um Lucifer. Sperber. And unfortunately I cannot give pumpkin cat away as it was something that I paid for two years ago and I don't think it, it still has a listing. Sorry. Hey single shoe is essentially silly walking. <gasps> I need to see. Oh God! Sorry. Must we? Yes. Yes. All the shoes are silly walking. You, you said that when we played these games, we would find every. Oh God, I love it. I love we it. We would look at everything. Therefore, we must look at silly walking. If you'd yeah. like, if you'd like to take them off now, you can. But thank you for. No, me. I want to keep watching. Oh. I've not fully. In well, thank you for indulging me. I am done. <laughs> well, if you need sugar for anything. 
Hmm. Like there's something that I will need it for. Plus, there's an arcane oven here, so we'll need that eventually. Oh, I think you were trying to find like an oven for something or other, so you can oh, make a yeah, thing or other. Oh yeah, we were looking for an oven and a fridge. Did we finish the fridge? We finished the fridge, baby. Yeah, I thought so. Okay, where was the guy that wanted the snack cakes? I think that was on Plunkett Street. No. No. It. <clears throat> I don't know. I think you can ask. Sorry, Val. Okay. Okay, let's look at it. Side quest. Take the snaffle cakes back to Marvin, but where in the hell is Marvin? I don't remember. Wait, wait, wait. Open up the map. The map? Map, 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 map. Thank you. Marvin, mailbox, right above you. Thank you. You round a street corner and encounter a woman in a welding mask using tightly focused magical fire to cut the fenders off a parked car. Hey, that isn't... I'm pretty sure that isn't your car. There's a polite cough behind you and you turn around to see a woman in oil-stained coveralls casually spinning a grease gun around one figure. Is this your car? Uh, no. Then it ain't your business neither. So maybe we should teach you a little lesson about li minding your business. You just said it isn't mine. The bewitcher. Bewitcher. Listen, you guys are going about this all wrong. You'll get much more usable parts off this jalopy if you take it back to your garage first, instead of trying to strip it quick and dirty on the street before a cop shows up. Uh, well, yeah, we usually do, but I weren't. Hot War Nancy's visiting her ma today. Good thing you met me then. You two go on ahead and get your tools ready and I'll get the car there for you. You? What are you going to do about it? Just a little of the old hocus pocus. You waggle your finger. You waggle your fingers and a hubcap floats off the car and does a lazy orbit around your head. I'll just hover it there. It's no big thing. I used to do this for Uncle Mikey all the time whenever he'd flip his tractor over. Well, huh. Finish the trick. Her grease gun sails out of her grasp and joins the hubcap spinning around your head. The two of them blink at you, then shrug at each other. All right, we'll go out and lock the garage door. Don't take all day. You manage to wait until they're out of sight before dropping the hubcap and grease gun and panting heavily. You got an item. Greasy wrench. Hmm. Uh, Deals your muscle and two sleeves damage. Well, that's stupid. Suckers. Come here. Come here, Jack. Come here. Marvin's still sitting on his mailbox, Dr. Graham. And you like getting those snackle cakes? I'm really jonesing for whatever it is they used for frosting. Yeah, I finally found some. Here you go. Thanks a million. Here, take some meat for the cakes, and I'll also give you some sitting tip. You gain 100 meat. You gain 10 XP, and you got a perk. Expert, Expert sitter. sitter. Well, You're so good at sitting down that you make it look even easier than it normally does. Thanks, Marvin. See you around. Okay. Now... I mean, you could go to the boardwalk. You can fish. Yes. Mm? You can go to the Erie House, which I personally love. Or you can go to the boardwalk and fish. Yeah. Where would, where where would Chat like you go? Chat. I'm the Chat. map and the map and the map. I love that we all went Dora the Explorer with that. Yes. <laughs> we went what? Dora the Explorer. Okay, you two did. I only. No, I've no, never no. Watched. The two of us plus Val. So. The three of us. The three of you. Okay. Yeah. Go fish. Hmm. Here's the thing. I'm the generation that heard um, Tay Young's new song cover and knew. Gee, that was from Fred Astaire's movie, Top Hat. You guys knew Dora the Explorer. 
Different what? generation. What are you giving me that look for, baby? I was just stunned. By what? She knew that it came from the movie Top Hat? Yes, I didn't realize that. <gasps> Hi, Plague! Plague! Oh my god, babe, please don't do that ever again. <laughs> I will scream. <laughs> Is that Tay Young, who's your guys' age, knows this or knows about this kind of music? I love that. Oh dear God! Thank you for the orchestra sting. I'm not sure how I'm hearing it, given I don't have those set up. Save Ow. my work. Can we save the game? No, it saves automatically. Uh -huh. Nobody has told me where you guys want me to go. Uh, well. We have one person say fishing, the other person says somewhere. Plague has yet to uh, make a decision and is hallucinating. I don't think Plague was here for the question. Uh, where do you want us to go? Eerie House or Boardwalk? And what are you hallucinating, sweetie? Are you okay? Hello. I, I took my meds. Did you take your meds? No. When are you going to take them? Um, whenever you hand them to me. Boardwalk. <laughs> so everyone's saying boardwalk, pretty much. Okay. Yeah. All right. I'm going to get some coffee, and then we will go to the boardwalk. Okay. And Val gives Al butter. Oh God. <laughs> I'm giving Lita her meds. Her meds are shaped kind of like a heart. You're hallucinating. <laughs> you sound alerts. I am not. Oh. Well, if she is, then I am too, so. I don't like that. I'm aware, baby. Don't worry. Neither am I. It hurts. What hurts? You got pokey. Oh, it's got pokey? Yeah. Yeah. Hi, Plague. What are you doing? Hallucinating, they said. No, they said you are. No, they said they're hallucinating. No, they said that. They, I don't know. <clears throat> We're all fucking hallucinating. Yes. No, I'm not. Oh. I just got Soul to leave me alone by meowing in her face. That sounds about right. An elderly man with thick eyeglasses shuffles up to you with a determined expression. Before you can react, he shoves some meat in your mouth and shouts in your ear. Operator, operator, get my worthless son on the line. Oh, Mister, I am not a payphone. That's what the last payphone said. I'm not buying it. Let me talk to my first fucking son. I'm sorry, sir. The line is busy. Please try again later. Ah, probably gambling with one of his floozy girlfriends. He shuffles away angrily. You gain four meat. That's an awfully weird way to gain four meat, but all right. Yes, we'll take it. indeed yeah. it is. Yeah. Well, Do not shove meat in my mouth. I will hurt you. Okay. First thing. That sounds like a hell one. Literally. <laughs> first thing. Um. Okay. Can somebody... Fishing rod. Sleep, sleep. No, I need somebody to play one of my sound alerts for me. Someone play a sound alert for Favor. Space Cadets. Oh, duh, because Star is in your name. Yeah. That's been my shtick, my man. Yeah, he's an alien. I'm an alien space wolf. Oh. So, fish. still not coming up for you guys. I cannot fish. Uh, rude. You can at the end of the pier. I love this silly block. I hate the silly block. Oh my god. I love it. It's entertaining me. What fish? Oh. 3D open. Oh. You got a fish in a sack. How? Find an empty bag near you. You just hold any fish you managed to reel in. You got a trash fire. God, you toss it in the fish sack. Fish in a sack. Let's see. Fishing. Waltzing Matilda fish. Space Lita doesn't have her model on right now. Yeah, no, I'm sorry, honey. 
Steve Ring? I'm sorry, Steve Ring? Zach, but what? Oh, it's a Steve Irwin and a Stingray. Rusty Cola can. Oh my god, it's Jojo it's Jojo Cola! Yay! Spearmint Taffy. I love uh It was a sound alert? Oh no, it is not. Yeah, no. Moon unit do weasel fish? Oh my effing god. I love that. It's mine. Somebody's a Frank Zappa fan. I don't know any of this. Okay. Frank Zappa is a singer, songwriter, rock star, whatever you want. He is also a little different, shall we say. He's pretty good, you know, as, as these things go. But he's a little different. He named his daughter Moon Use It and his son Deweasel. I love that. They didn't. <laughs> Where did that come from? It's so Apparently it's coming from like the OBS, which means it's probably getting heard on your end too, which is so I'm so sorry to everybody on Star's end. I'm not. <laughs> cigarette okay I don't know if I caught what I needed to it's likely you guys will not be able to hear this for a while I'm so sorry we're still learning streamlabs no I know streamlabs but I was hoping I wouldn't have to do the thing that I usually do for my I'm thing I'm still learning streamlabs Welcome back, Val. Thank you for sitting through those seven ads. Oh, we really appreciate it. Can't do any. Sorry, Elite, I'm broke. The sound alerts are, um... Just channel points. <laughs> yeah, and down below there's zero bitty ones. Hey there, I'm Greddy. Well, hey there. Pleased to meet you, Greddy. I'm Dusty. Hi, um, Dusty. What's up, Dusty? Because we're not going to be rude to the hobos. Oh, nothing much. Just hanging around. I was going to run a three-card Monty down here on the boardwalk, but that didn't pan out. Why not? Well, there's a fella already running the game down the way, and I prefer not to step on his toes, just as a matter of professional courtesy, you see. And also because carnies get real scary about that kind of thing, and I ain't looking to be murdered anytime soon. Damn. Any way I can help? Oh, that's real kind of you. I was thinking of looking for a different corner. Can you spare a nickel for a cup of joe to get my feet moving? Give her the meat. Yes. Thanks, lady. You're a real good egg. I, <laughs> I have been instructed to kiss my husband. Mwah! I actually have a Lita kiss redeem. I haven't put it back up yet, though. Oh! Fortune teller's tent was supposed to be down in the graveyard, but okay. Pop inside. You enter a dimly lit tent see a teenage girl dressed as an old woman sitting at a velvet draped table. She points to a sign on the wall that says, Tarot readings, 50 meat. Uh, what do you think? Complain about the price? Complain about the price. 50 meat's just a little steep, isn't it? I could buy seven, six... 63 64 gallons of gas for that much. She stares at you and points at the sign again. Shall we pay for a reading? Sure. It would be a All right. Crow. The teen takes your meat and begins. You spend mm -hmm. 50 meat. The first card oh. tells us about where you've been. Be she like flipped over a card. Ah, the Marquis of Pants. Okay, what does that mean? What does it mean? She stifles a laugh. This suggests a lingering memory in your history. I see water. Hmm, that doesn't sound familiar. Like a string of crimbo lights, the second card illuminates your present. She pauses for a moment for effect, then draws a card. Uh, this one is the er, eager guide. You don't seem too sure of that. She t stares at you intently. This card means that you're currently sitting in a chair. Don't argue with that, I suppose. The last card tells the future. She draws She draws a card which she drops on the floor. She draws another card. 
Okay, I know this one. This is the sloppy carpenter. I, really? She smiles. In the future, you will get your shoes wet. If you're not careful. I see. Consider what just happened. I want the card that fell on the floor. Yeah, me too. She totally discarded that too because she didn't know what it was. Uh huh. The sign on the door said, Tony Fiasco, hat photographer. Go inside. Okay. As you enter, the photographer okay. who's busy. It's on now. Sorry, as you enter, the photographer who is busily adjusting a complicated looking camera on a tripod gestures to a nearby wastebasket without looking around. If it's more bills, there's my inbox. Um, oh. Hello? Hmm, are you ain't the jump at your host, fat baby? Where have you been all my life? Yeah. Excuse me? That face, that's exactly the face I've been looking for. It's perfect. Thanks, I've grown rather attached to it myself. Hey, hey, you're funny too, baby. I love you. You're incredible. Listen, do you know who I am? The sign on your roof said Tony Fiasco hat photographer. That's right, baby. That's exactly right. And soon I'm going to be the biggest hat photographer in the city. No, the country. No, the world. But there's something I need first. A face? At a guess. A portfolio. And you know what I need before I got a portfolio? Um, a face. Your face, baby. Well, I, um... Don't say no. Don't you dare say no, baby. Listen, it's easy. All you gotta do is stroll in here wearing a hat. All I gotta do is take a photograph of that hat. And then we're both gonna be rich. Rich? Rich! Me with my portfolio. And you with the 30 meter, I'm gonna pay you for every picture. Huh, well... Gotta be different hats, though. Gotta be different hat every time. I can't pay you nothing for the same hat twice. Got it? Okay, how about this hat? Thank you for well, feeding the virtual Odin. What is that? An uncursed fedora? Perfect. I love it. Okay, here's your meat, baby. Spend it in good health and come back soon. Okay. So now we have a new way of earning money. Sick. Let's, let's put on the broken coconut. And go inside. Hey, welcome back. Welcome back, baby. Let me see that hat you're wearing. What's, what is that? A broken coconut? Perfect. I love it. Here's your meat, baby. Spend it in good health and come back soon. Okay. Coconut. And we're going to equip the uncursed fedora. Okay. So we don't have any other hats right now. A grouchy looking guy is standing under the shade of this build, tiny building's eaves. Talk to him. He glares at you silently. Okay. I don't know what to do to get him to talk. Game of skills. Test your everything. Talk to the attendant. Step right up. Step right up. Test your strength, your agility, and your intellect. Every winner gets a prize. You there, miss. Care to face the challenge of a lifetime? Only ten meet. What's the challenge? I like to start newcomers off with something relatively easy. All you have to do is guess my age, throw a dart, pop a balloon, and drive a nail into this board with one swing of a hammer. Jesus At Christ. At the same time? That's right. Care to try? Okay. Okay. Hmm. Well, you look about 38, but pop bang. You reek of cigarette so smoke, so I'm going to say 34. Nicely done. Right on the money. Here's your prize. Some fancy new beach shoes. He takes a pair of clogs out from under the counter and hands them to you. Got an item. Crab clogs. Makes you walk like a fuck. <laughs> Guess what we're putting on. Mm-hmm. What? You're putting on the crab claws. I hate you. I hate you both. You love, love us. You. I won't have you wear them for long because they make the worst sound in the world. What do you mean, Belle? 
You said fuck, I think, out loud. I don't remember. Me either. I don't recall this, Your Honor. To buy the cooking for health? And the gauze turban. You shouted out Jesus Christ. Oh, it's because everything that guy wanted you to do is insane. Yeah. I already have three gauze bags. Sunscreen. Cotton candy's pretty nice, though. Hmm, I think I'll get one. Okay. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Before we do anything, we're going to equip the god's turban. And go back and collect most of the cost of that. How so? Oh my god. See? Oh. Hey, welcome back, welcome back. Let me see that hat you're wearing. What is that, a gauze turban? Perfect, I love it. Here's your meat, baby. Spend it in good health and come back soon, okay? You can take off the crab claws now, by the way. Thank you. Oops. She was it's so the wrong thing. I mean, I could pressure her to put on the one shoe again. And put I like this game. I like Family Night. Me too. Yeah. It's fun. I like these games. They're interesting. Okay, apparently you can't go on the Ferris wheel. Sad. It's awful. Yeah, why? Rude. It he says, deathly afraid of heights. How are you going to go on roller coasters with me if you're afraid of heights? Love. Okay. Uh, no. If you're afraid of heights, I'm not taking you with me. Nah, I'll love it once I'm there. Uh huh. Uh, seven Edge. Bye, Val. Love you. <laughs> Stay safe. <laughs> okay. Before we do that, I want to see what I'm supposed to do. Go to the bus stop in front of the antique store and take the bus to Crystal Dream Lake. Any side quests? Oh my god, Crystal Dream Lake. Hmm. That's a Jason and a Freddy reference in one, I feel. Yes. Yes, it is. Love it. It's also a reference to West of Loathing. Because they had a, a camp camp at Crystal Dream Lake or something. Oh my god! I love that. You pass by an alley where two women wielding grease stained coveralls and welding masks are slashing against the wall and sharing a cigarette. They glare at you as you pass. Hey, isn't that blister that Copper Holly was telling us about? They lower their masks and snap their fingers. The tips of their index fingers spark into white hot flames. That's welder tailpipe shut. Seriously, Lizzie? <clears throat> oh, not realized these were. <clears throat> okay, that's enough to do you or you. The three and four. Okay, two. Swish. Mask. Hooray! 
I need to take yeah. that back to the boardwalk and get goofy meat. Or derby meat. This seems like a pretty normal house in a pretty nice neighborhood, but there's something odd about it. A sort of uncomfortable energy that makes the hair on the back of your neck stand up. Maybe it's something to do with that weird droning no tone you come you hear coming from inside. Like a pained, inhuman moan constantly rising in pitch. Maybe that's it, yeah. Bye, Deca! I love your face! You knock but hear no response. She so you know your way inside. That eerie sound is even louder in here. It seems to be coming from upstairs. Also, the owner's interior design sensibilities are a little strange. I yep. expected nothing. A bunch of books about musical theory. Even the most basic one would be totally beyond you. A dusty just used chess set. It's a day stand. Plate rack is a statement piece, and the statement is, I have too many plates. Tea time was a long time ago. There's nothing left here but stains. A shelf full of trophies for music competitions. A cabinet full of backup plates, like there weren't enough on the stand. It's a cabinet full of sheet music, examine one of the pieces. You pull out a sheet, but it's all in German. And you can't scan just looking. Yes, actually I can. This door is locked. Go upstairs. I can speak German. You brat. Happy trails. Thank you, Decca. Climb it. Eerie music house. Talk to him. A tired looking man is playing the cello here. What? Who are you? Why are you in my house? Sorry for intruding, but I heard the music and I guess I have an intrusive nature. My name is Gretty Wren. Well, I am Ernst Zimmer. Forgive me for not stopping, but it is vital I continue playing. What are you doing? There is a darkness beneath my house. Did you check the fuse box? No, I... Probably that, then. Listen to me. I had a dream. A premonition of a dark rift appearing in my basement and growing until it swallowed the entire house. And then the neighborhood. And then and then the world. That, well, that's quite a dream. It was not just a dream. I went downstairs to check the basement and there is indeed a rift. And as of now it is still small. I must keep playing this cello to prevent it from, glow, from growing any larger. How does playing the cello help? And boy, that's annoying. Yes, <clears> it <throat> really is. Base vibration reverberates downward, which is focused by the circle of furniture downstairs. This resonance inhibits the rift. Hmm, I don't really get it, but okay. Are you a physicist or something? No, I am only a cellist. I cannot explain how I knew this would work. Hmm, okay. You mind if I have a look at this rift? Very well. I cannot blame you for wanting to see it with your own eyes. You'll have to reach into my pocket to take the key to the basement for yourself, as I require both, the, both hands to play. Yeah. Well, okay. Please do not get too close to the rift. Alright. You do not want to ask him to stop, by the way. You can ask him to stop, but do not. Alright, good luck. Go back down. Go through. All right. Uh. Okay, let's examine the rest of the basement first. Collect the mold. Use all this rubble. Okay. And that's all there is except for the rift. I'm going to get too close to it. Well, it's your funeral. If there's any of you left to have a funeral with. Okay. On closer inspection, it seems like less of a rift and more of a pool of some thick black car-like substance. Where did it come from? Investigate. The only thing nearby is a shelf of old basement junk. Check the bottom shelf. Nothing on the shelf except for a few old jam jars. Check the second shelf. Nothing on the shelf except dust. 
write your name in the dress. <clears throat> Except for you. You don't Check the third shelf. This shelf has a box filled with things. It's full of little screws, rubber bands, stuff like that. Looks like when Zimmer's kitchen junk drawer gets too full, he just dumps it in here. Since you're already looking, you sift through it for a second and find a fuse that still looks good. Zimmer probably won't mind, or even know, if you pocket it. Good. You got an item fuse. Check the top shelf. The top shelf has a few old tins of varnish and a big bucket of tar. As you watch, a drip of tar slowly leaks out of the hole in the bottom of the bucket and plops into the puddle below. Well, there you go. Mystery solved. Ah. Right a fish. Caught something. You got an item. Glob of tar. The tar puddle is now too empty to fish in. Okay. That's odd. Is there, is there anything else I need to do with this? Just the See, puddle of tar. Keep going to the left if it'll let you. Because here's the thing. There's actually supposed to be a black hole down here. Dang it, babe. Okay, go up and tell him to stop playing then, because apparently it can only be made once, um... Yep. I figured it out. Figured out what? What do you mean? That black rift in your basement isn't a rift at all. It's just a puddle created by a leaking bucket of tar. Tar? Oh my goodness, this is mortifying. I've been such a fool. Don't be so hard on yourself. It's a pretty stupid coincidence. Well, at least I can stop playing this cello. I'm exhausted. Yeah, go ahead and rest. Don't worry, everything's fine. Feel free to go downstairs now. Talk to him. Go back down. Ah! Well, maybe convincing Zimmer to stop playing his cello wasn't such a good idea after all. Okay. Fear that two ghosts are playing a very spirited game of chess. The day stand has become a nightstand. Every one of these moldering books is titled Blood. Hello. No more plates. A viscous black sludge burbles in the teapot. Fish. This isn't tea. You got an item, Eldritch Miss. Take some. Bubbling black sludge. Okay. Moss have eaten all of the contents and most of the container. A shelf full of trophies for murder competitions. It's a cabinet full of sheet music. You pull out a sheet. It's a piece entitled All Our Rit and No Spiel Makes Ernst a Dull Boy. Okay. Because, yeah, that makes sense. I do not see any. Go downstairs. Doors seem better jams. Oh, jeez. That sure is a dark rift of space over there, just like Zimmer was afraid of. Looks like it's just a coincidence, unless it was magic shadow tar or something. Probably wasn't magic shadow tar. Well, nuts. <sighs> All right. First. I have the most... Moxie. 
Uh, if tomato is fruit, does that make ketchup a jam, jelly, or smoothie? Maybe a fruit sp I have no okay. idea. I have five moxie. So, let's go with this. <clears throat> All right. Get this over with. It's a big hole in, well, in here. Step through. Yeah. You find yourself in an infinite black void. Oh, well, it looks like an infinite black void. But you have the uneasy feeling that your brain is only showing you an infinite black void. Because it doesn't really want to try and process what this place actually looks like. It's a weird feeling. Look around. A thrumming spike of nega energy. Dampen it. Dampen it. Dampen it. Dampen it. Dampen it. Nope. Picture a more like a large muscular person. If you built a large muscular person. <laughs> Out of some kind of writhing black ooze mm -hmm. and or smoke and or just plain raw darkness. It has a fifth sized glowing parts. crystal embedded in, embedded in its chest about where its sternum would be. And as you draw near, you can feel it radiating invisible waves of energy. Kind of like heat coming off a radiator, except also the opposite of that and also not at all related to that. Look, incomprehensible forces are tricky to describe, okay? The creature shambles back and forth. <laughs> what? just that. It's hard to explain, okay? The creature shambles back and forth, waving its arms in a way that almost looks like it's dancing or praying or maybe just absentmindedly flailing. It seems oblivious to your presence. Although, that will probably change pretty quickly if you try to interfere with it. Like, say, if you try to pry the glowing crystal out of its chest, size it up. The creature looks like it could be become very aggressive and dangerous if you mess with it. We'll leave it alone for now. Uh. Dampen it. 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 See if it still wants you to do 10 muscle. You approach the shambling shadow beast, which continues to shamble. The crystal in its chest sparkles importantly at you. The creature looks extremely weak, almost docile. Pry out the crystal. You make a quick grab for the crystal, but it's firmly lodged in the creature's chest. The creature howls. Its long, spindly arms flail ineffectually in as... As you barely cognizant of your actions, plunge your hands into murky flesh, fingers questing through lukewarm tar, ew, until they find ribs. Gritting your teeth, forcing open the cage, equal ew, creaking, cracking, snapping like dry branches. You grab your prize and tear it free of the muck. The creature evaporates in a sigh of smoke. The crystal is both warm and cold in your hand, and has a slight buzz buzzing vibration to it. Disgusting! 10 out of 10. Do not like. Hmm. <laughs> Take it with us? Yeah, sure. Why not? What? what? If something tells you that this crystal is very important, as well as being really shiny and pretty. You got an item, Rift Crystal. No, when they said pry out the crystal, it's like, uh, the reason the dude's gonna get upset with you is because that's his art. Jeez. Mm -hmm. my Literally. Okay. It, it taking the weird crystal out of here might be a bad idea. On the other hand, it's yours now, and you'd prefer to keep it. 
Enter the rift, stay here, smash the crystal. What shall we do, chat? Uh... Here's the, here's the thing. Gonna... This is actually really important because if you fuck this up, you kill the dude. Yeah. So, I apologize uh, to all of our lovelies in chat, but I don't trust you. Who, me? Chat. Oh. Yeah, well, I'm going to run for a bio break. Okay. I'm, I'm thinking if you smash the crystal, you're going to kill whatever this is. If you stay here, wait. Hold stay on. here and re-look everything. Maybe. I don't know. I'll be back. All right, I'm back. Hi. Hello? Hello. Hey. Okay, so here are your options. Uh, you can take the crystal with you, and if you leave the house, you will destroy the uh, house and possibly Zimmer within it. But you have the option to get a... Uh, to have another encounter and a companion later on in the game. Or, you can destroy the crystal, save Zimmer, save the house, and get, like, Zimmer's cello and 10 HP. XP. 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 Sorry. So. I want to see what happens. Okay. No. Yeah, Cal, we've done quite a bit. We were quiet because Alito was looking up. Yeah. You put inventory if you don't have a, actually have a hammer. Whatever object would be the most hammer adjacent. And give the crystal a th solid thwack. It makes it sound like a baby being torn in half and burst into glittering shards to shoot off into the darkness. Immediately you feel, well, I was going to say a massive earthquake, but since you aren't standing on the ground, you wouldn't feel that. So it's more of an everything quake. You should probably get out of here. Uh-oh. You dive back into the rift just before it collapses vanishes. Thankfully, you find yourself back in Ernst Zimmer's basement, but and not some kind of horrible in-between dimensions purgatory. You run up the stairs to tell Ernst the good news. Talk to him. Hey, Ernst. Hello. I fixed it. I closed the rift. You did? That's wonderful. I owe you my life and probably also my house's life. Here, take this cello. I have no further need of it. And to be quite frank with you, the thought of playing it ever again only pains me. Zimmer's cello. Feels your muscle plus three physical damage. It's kind of a nice weapon. Okay, thanks. Mm-hmm. Go back down. And the room is back to relatively normal. Including the plates are no longer smashed. 
Wow. Nice. Thanks. Jinx. Into the basement. Sure. Battle of Altar. I. Box is moldy sheet music. Go up. Okay then. Okay, what effects do we got? Pretty spoon. I haven't actually used any potions. Alright. Nice. 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 Do you want to? Um, only when I need them because yeah. Valid. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's see. All right, that was the eerie house. Did we do the tentacle house to completion? I don't know. As two of you are walking down the street, Molly suddenly stops and gestures at a nearby gun shop. Oh, hey, I know this bulldogger. Hang on a second. You want to go shopping? No, I just want to get my type or a quick tune-up. The sight, the sight on it is kind of hinky. Catch yourself a piece of cake. I'll be right back. You don't see any cake around here, disappointingly. But uh, Molly returns pres presently with a freshly polished tiny gun and a cheerful grin. Now we're hitting on all sixes. Come on, kitty. Let's get a wiggle on. And here I thought Gabby was hard to understand. Uh, this is the front door to that Calama Calamari factory riot. And door. Seems like this house used to be quite nice. Tall ceilings, nice wallpaper, fancy molding everywhere. Now, however, the wallpaper is peeling, the plaster is crumbling, and there's tentacles poking out everywhere. It's a real fixer-upper. Hello? Anyone call for tentacle exterminator? I don't think anyone called for the ten for a tentacle exterminator, but if you want to do some pro bono extermination anyway, I also don't think anyone's going to stop you. Well, maybe except the tentacle. Which, Let's at that go. point, just yeet them. Chuck. Yeah. Let's look around. More tentacles. And a swell. A massive colony of virtues in the wall. So it was remarkably clean on the outside. Ah, yes. All the filth is on the inside. That makes sense. Okay. Flesh Going it. for a scooter ride was fun. Nice. Also, I'm loving that you are just destroying this poor house. Yes. Thank you, baby. Somebody, lo Somebody lost a ring in the drain. Unfortunately, your fingers are just long enough to grab it. You got an item. Inspiring ring. It's so ri this ring is so nice, it makes everybody within a 10 foot already foot radius of it seem more powerful. Increase your companion's muscle mystery <gasps> and moxie by two at the start of combat. First of all, okay. love that. Second of all, oh my gosh, hi, Looney! Hi, Looney. How are you, darling? You're supposed to be in bed. Bob of wet hair, okay. I we're gonna have to fight them all. You're on your way to bed. Good, good, good. Those mm -hmm. tentacles aren't trying to be anything in particular. <clears throat> I hadn't thought of that, but it's hilarious. Thing. Oh, that really didn't mm. do what I meant. Well, thank you for popping in. We love you, Looney. We love you, Looney. Okay.
There, you got your kiss from a fool. Thank you. That was adorable. You wiggled your nose, I assumed it was. Uh... It is. There you go. That's why I thought it was cute. Is this comfy? No, I was gonna say, do you love your armrest? It's warm. It's warm. Yay, Thanks. 19 meat! F what? Excellent. Um, my which? Your fop bum egg. Uh -huh. Oh, okay. So. What do you think? Should I continue with that or should I put on the inspiring ring? I think we'll go with the inspiring ring. Yeah. Okay. There's exactly one drawer left in chat. A wise person said that fishing is not a good use of time, but that prop that person probably didn't have as much spare time as you do. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, I have a lot of spare time. Drop a line in. Identical seed. in a sack. Okay. The refrigerator almost certainly contains ores beyond your reckoning. Nasty old leftovers. Right. We already had some of those. Yummy. <laughs> Jackpot. It was a junk drawer. You got the choice of spits and a sharp junk mail and a sharpening stone. Okay. Let's fish again. See what else we get. If anything. Fish in a sack. Okay. So basically now. Let's go past here. Yes. Yes indeed. The door is locked. There will be a key around here somewhere. I predict. Go up the stairs to the second floor. I keep thinking that one of these is going to have something, but no, not yet. The door is barred from the other side. If the bar is anything like the rest of this house, though, it won't take much to break through it. We'll break that in a minute. Let's check the other door. Denticles! Fight them. You can do that when we go upstairs. You've rendered this room very slightly less terrible. Okay. This is the very thing I got in this man. 
What, you don't do a lot of fighting for the mob? Ah, oh, they're all wet. Always giving me an earful of shooting up the place is bad for business. Well, I'm glad you're enjoying yourself. Please. All right. Check the drawers. Jewelry case, tentacle house key. Dirty handkerchiefs and a jewelry box and a key on the bottom one. Okay. Oh, oh, wrong one. Jewelry case. Open. <clears throat> you dump out the jewelry box's contents, which is so exciting that you get to keep the box itself. You got an item. Amethyst choker. <laughs> an inside out ring of weakness. Shiny. And odd. Everybody that you... Uh, amethyst sugar plus one muscle mm. okay I don't think so probably clean wardrobe wear a hanger wear a coat hanger okay sure I can Okay, then, Smarty Pants, what do you think it was? Was it a wing chair? Nope. A chest? No. Nope. How about a beach chair? How about a chair? Incorrect. Credenza. Writing desk? Secretary. You can't find this out. I think you couldn't guess. Yeah, yeah. You know, here's the thing. I expect that nothing you say is right. Honestly, probably. Break it down. Okay, it was a little harder than expected. Oh, no. Okay. Check the drawers. Creepy locket. Old wallet. Bed must have fallen victim to especially angry bed bugs. The mirror has, to your great surprise, avoided damage. Look into it. Ironically, this house's backyard looks really nice. Termites have conspired to make it to make it look like this wardrobe has one giant bite taken out of it instead of thousands of tiny ones. There's hardly anything left of whatever this was. Okay, let's check the items we've got. Got an all old wallet. Loot it. Mint the money. Creepy locket. The inscription reads, Melinda, my love, but the picture is just a crude drawing of a single eye. Um, Okay. I'm gonna head out, Lita. Okay. Love your face, Calvion. I hope you have a good sleep. Okay. Uh, down the stairs. Go down. Unlock. Head down the stairs. What are we gonna do? Ha, <laughs> ha,
Investigate. Insert one. Ha! Ah, hooray! Slightly less dark. Yes, I figured. Okay. Dirtiest broom you've ever seen. Grab it. Alright. What are you? What is that? Holy dang, what is that thing? Fight it. Check and throw. Oh my goodness. What? Somebody. <laughs> Thanks, Thank you, Kel. Blessed. Keep you on your toes. I am on my toes. Tippity. Tippity, tippity, toppity of my toes. Okay. No. Yes, Val. That's what I was thinking. You love me. I do. Oh, uh, no. Okay. Ugh. Blast. Shoot. Damn, Mama. Good job. <laughs> Oops. Seeds. Here's the problem. There's a hole in this bag of tentacle seeds. Some of them must have fallen on the old dirt floor and crowded. Clean them up. Got 11 tentacle seeds. Okay. Nice. Uh, this washing machine needs to be washed and repaired and completely replaced. See what's inside. Mildew jeans. My team, one physical armor. Nice. Okay. Ah, didn't I get to fish? Uh, apparently, oh, you have chosen to not fish. I should have fished first, I guess. Yeah, I'm sorry, Mama. It's okay. I didn't know or I would have told you. Okay. Probably not important. Try? Oh, again, maybe. Interesting. Maybe you can fish in spots every day. <coughs> okay, so that's the tentacle house. And Marvin and Boardwalk. St. Polycarp. Let's see what's down here. Two goblins wearing shorts with suspenders and carrying. You know those things, those marching band things? They're like an upright harp, except instead of strings, they have metal xylophone bars. Those things. Anyway, these goblins are carrying those, and they interrupt you. Hi, hello. Uh, hi, what's up? You're intruding on the territory of the Glockenins. Am I? I don't know what a Glocken is. V are Glockens, V both. V are the toughest all street gangs in Ocean City. But you think about it. Sure, I guess you do look pretty tough. No sense in insulting them for no reason. That is true. We do it. Your uh, xylophones are pretty cool, too. 
Box telephones. These are glockenspiels that we have. Oh, glockens. I get it now. I'm so outraged over you. I th think we shall a mugging do. Hypnotize them. You wiggle your fingers mystically at the goblins. A mugging, huh? How about if you mug each other? Okay. What? I haven't even really started yet. This is this still our first mug bee, so it is good to practice. Okay. So, you will, you will me your wallet give. Okay, and you will me your wallet give. Okay. The two, two goblins exchange wallets, then shake hands. We have on our first day two mugs made. We must the boss tell about this. They will be so proud. The two goblins march away happily, playing jiggly victory music on their glockenspiels. Dear God. Alrighty. Says meet Sash, fourth tree, the left church, back row. Interesting. To the left. Okay, that'd be over here. Oh wait. It's a little hole in the tree. Oh okay. Old wallet. Okay. Loot it. Hundred and three meat. I'm in the money. This is still better. Okay. Okay, so the problem is that I'm not getting my phone, so it thinks that my phone is its own account. So that's the problem. Hmm. Here, he seems agitated about something. Talk to him. It's probably the damn bells. No, what am I going to do? I was going to ask if everything's okay, but plainly not. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't see you there. Er, services are cancelled for the moment. What's the matter? One of the urns has been stolen from our catacombs. Stolen! Isn't this the same Th thing that happened in the last game? Not exactly. But close. It's a cousin. It's a cousin. This tiny cathedral has catacombs? Well, it sounds nicer than basement. Are they particularly important ashes? Oh my goodness, we wouldn't keep relics of a saint in a little cathedral like this. Our urns are just the ashes of former vicars and community leaders and, leaders and so on. But they're all important in their own way. And the bishop is, oh God, the bishop, is due to arrive for an inspection soon. Uh -huh. Funny how bishops are... Funny how bishops always seem to be just about to arrive for an infection somewhere. What? Oh, I'll look into it for you. Oh, thank you so much. Here, I'll unlock the door so you can have a look. Mind your step on the way down, please. Those stairs are old and steep. All right. Can I turn the bells off? Hymnal. Unpleasant hymnal. Crack it open to deal your muscle and spooky damage once per bite. Please don't disturb the altar. Okay. The, ca this, the cathedral's font, or more properly, typeface. Fish! This may be something useful. You managed to reel something in. You got an item handful of holy water. Probably shouldn't tempt fate anymore today. Okay. Uh, the picture. Head down. Fair urns. Uh, it's a big crate of full of identical empty burial urns. Must be spares. A fancy pedestal with an old urn on it. A fancy pedestal with an old urn on it. A fancy pedestal with nothing on it. It's a very old manhole cover. It's the guest book. Read it. The last three visitors were Don Harperby, 
visiting from Saskatoon. Well, that seems like a dead end, and I sure have some weird names up in Canada. Charles Wall. Oh my! Charles Wallace, one 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 Plunkett Street. Huh. That's the address of the antique store. I have to ask Charles about that. About that, the next time you see him. Captain Augustus Derwich, twenty three Kerwin Avenue. This one might be worth following up on. Okay, sign the book. There's a patch of tomb moss growing on the wall here. Collect it. Eldritch Mist. Okay. Ooh. Candle left unlit. Light it. Oh. <laughs> Hopefully this doesn't pre preclude you cursing the darkness later if you feel like it. All right. Can I do? No. All right. Uh, Dirty's house. Molly notices some tin cans scattered in an alley and stops to stack them into a pyramid. Let's do some bean shooter practice. Every little bit helps. And anyway, my finger's getting itchy. Seems like maybe we shouldn't be shooting guns in the middle of the city. My baloney. It's copacetic. Says here ain't worth a plug nickel. And who else is going to raise a beef when we're clearly healed? I'll take your word for it as soon as I can figure out what it was. The two take turns shooting at the cans and we run out of cans. I've just offended my husband horribly. I'm sorry. He wanted to um he wanted to plug in his phone and I was like What with mine? And he was like, Yeah, and I handed him the cord to show him it wouldn't fit and he dead ass took the cord thinking i was just holding it back from him and then noticed and was like i don't like you <laughs> okay the rock is steaming no can i mm. Annie, can I ask you to read for me? Yeah, sure. Having some trouble? Mm, yeah. Okay. <sighs> what? What? Who's it? Uh. I'm just selling these fine leather jackets. I'm from the Municipal Census Bureau. Uh, I'm the milkman. Er, uh, milkwoman. Got your milk? Congratulations, you've won a sweepstakes. I'll come back later. Okay, what should we do? I don't know. What do you want to do? Well, I don't have a leather jacket. Um, or any milk. So it probably ought to be two or four. Well, baby, should we be from the Municipal Census Bureau? Or a scam artist? Census. Okay. Okay, I didn't hear. Census. Okay. Okay, we can do all of them. Okay, it looks like I'm going to just have to come back later. I don't know how to get into there. Okay, uh, 11, 10, 82. Sweetie? Mm hmm. Would you read? Yes. You are unexpectedly surrounded by three glockens, menacingly playing their glockenspiels at you. Which is a real trick, if you think about it. Hey, what gives? This is a muggery. We insist on it that you 
to us all of your meat give. Mm. What? All of it? That's crazy. Mm. Mm. I get that is a little extreme. Save me instead seven meat. What do you think? I'd give them that meat if yeah, it's just, just seven. Yeah. Okay. Welcome back, Val. Hello. Okay. Um. I need. I need the newspaper office. Okay. The cover story for that date is the sinking of the Kirkwood, a whaling vessel that operated off the ocean, the coast of Ocean City. The story says that the wreck had only one survivor, Captain August Durch. Despite his best efforts to go down with the ship, he was rescued and transported to shore by a friendly otter. How simultaneously tragic and adorable. Yeah. I'm confused. But okay. Okay, I'm not going to read this again. We got mistaken for a payphone. Honey, I... Oh, sorry. I keep forgetting. <clears throat> what do you want? Uh, well, I'm uh, from the Ocean City Watch for Light. You know, the newspaper. Don't trust newspaper. Nor newspaper reporters, neither. Well? Nor otters. Fortunately, I'm only one of those three things. Can I ask you about the poor quad? Ain't nothing to say. Storm blew up. Unexpected. We hit a funny rock. All hands lost. That was decades ago. Why are you bothering me now? Uh, well, it's a slow news day. What, what was funny about the rock? You ever see a 30-foot black basalt obelisk sticking straight up out of the ocean? Can't say I have. Me neither, and I've been sailing that route for years. So, I guess when you said funny, you didn't mean it. As in, haha. -ha. Uh, what's with these rocks in your front yard? I know nothing about those, except for the date marker I put. Did they just come with the house? New one pops up every once in a while. What's that got to do with anything? Well, nothing, I guess. How many men were in your crew? There was Pegleg, Handsome Jeff, and less Handsome Jeff, and old Barnacle Face. He looks a sconce at the row of urns. And, uh, the other one. So, five. What was the fifth sailor's name? I ain't recall. He was new. Just signed on for that last voyage. Didn't talk much. Eerie fella, to be honest. Eerie? Spooky, that's all I gotta say about him. You have a lot of urns? Curry's body washed ashore after a time. Didn't figure they'd want a sea burial after what happened, so I had him cremated. Well, except. Except? That fifth fella weren't never found. I ain't. I ain't recall how that urn got here. He was a member of the crew, right and proper though. So we got as much right to be here as any of them. Do you ever visit that little cathedral? Hmm? Sure. You used to go pay my respects once in a while, back before my knees started acting up. Got plenty of urns to talk to right there, though. 
right here, though. Oh. You talk to the urns? Yep. We shoot the breeze. Relive old glories and such. You say that like they talk back. They do! And I can see from your face that you don't believe me. So you can ask him yourself, landlubber. I guess I'll have a chat with your urns then. Fine, but if you got any more questions for me, ask them now. I'm tired of all this chit-chat. I'm done asking questions. Thanks. Um, hello? Theron doesn't respond. Anybody there? You turn to make sure the captain is asleep, then mutter gruffly to the urn. Are there, Johnny? You can speak freely now, sailor. I got rid of that no good landlubber. A muffled, youthful voice, youthful sounding voice replies, Yar, Cap, what they want anyhow? Ah, nothing of import. Your basic landlubber prattle trying to sell newspapers and the like that. Hey, no mind. Aye, aye, Captain. So, uh, how are things? Oh, no problems, Captain. Everything's ship shake, huh? <laughs> Always happy to chew the sea biscuit with you, though. Sure, let's uh, reminisce about old times. Great, I love hearing your stories of nautical adventure. Uh, um. Instead of that, how, why don't you tell me how you got the name Peg Leg Johnny? Well, uh, it's because of my leg, right? Got a peg leg? <laughs> sure, sure, how'd you get... I... Ugh. I got it because I lost the original leg? I'd assume so. Yeah, you are, but how? Um, well, um... Wait, weren't you there when it happened? Time for my nap. I'll talk to you later. I'm sorry, the... the... I've got drainage down the back of my throat. This isn't comfy for me either. Oh god, okay. So how you have... Huh? I was gonna do it. I mean Smooth sailing, Captain. You feel like talking over old times? Sure, I mean you are, why not? Right then, what's particular yarn from your past have you got on your mind? Oh, I'm actually let's about you? Me? The fellow next to you is less handsome, Jeff, eh? So this is a judgment of your relative appearance is literal, or is it more of an ironic reversal sort of deal? Well, I, uh, you never, wait a minute. Don't you remember what we actually look like? Yes, of course I do. Gotta go. Bye. Hmm. Cigarettes? So wait, all of them talk back to you? Apparently. That's weird. How do we know that it's not somebody, like... Pretending. Ooh, I wonder what the cat gives you. Cat shies away from your touch. You notice that he's wearing a collar that says Ishmael. Hmm. Is there what? I don't know. Just wanted just if you wanted to wax nostalgic about old times or anything. Alright. Alright, so uh yeah, yeah, I'm sure glad we had this talk. Okay. Hmm. 
Barnacle face. Uh, I was just wondering why. I mean, and of course, I know why, but if you have any insight into. I mean, uh, you've, not, you've never actually said that is. Never asked before, so I thought. I'd have thought you already. Right, yeah, obviously, I already. Anyway, if you're not comfortable discussing it, that's fine. Okay, yeah, good. Yeah, or, yeah. Or. Okay. Good sailor. Do I have any cigarettes? I feel like I have cigarettes. Or a cigarette. You have one cigarette. Yeah. Oh, wait, I know. You have a cigarette on you, Mama. No, I have a... a Okay, I have a waterlogged cigarette. Okay. I need to buy cigarettes. Fine. Wouldn't the waterlogged one be fine for a sailor? Oh. Nothing hovers towards you. I mean, something hovers towards you, but that something is literally nothing. Well, let me try that again. A thing that appears to be a hole in physical space, the opposite of not just of matter, but of existence, hovers towards you. Through it, you can see the faint twinkling lights of ancient dying stars, and the black smoke drifting out of it appears to be more of itself, more nothingness, or perhaps anti-thingness leaking into this world. Is there a better description? I think I'll have to do. Oh, here comes another one. Fight them. Hmm. The orb dissolve into black smoke and I don't know, angst probably. Old surplus. Say hi. Um. Holy Wars Russian cigarettes. There we go. Okay. cigarettes on the tray you put the cigarettes on the tray and and quickly hatch a, hatch a plan approaching the fifth urn you put captain dirge's voice on again all right matey your smokes be upon the table well as you wanted appreciate it captain then you hide behind the captain who is snoring in his chair after a time the book slides aside an unshaven shifty looking guy pokes his head out and glances around surreptitiously he then tiptoes over to the table Picks up the pack of cigarettes and returns to the secret door. The bookcase, bookcase slides shut behind him. Well, what do you know? Inspect the bookcase. You try to push the bookcase aside, but it's locked in place. There must be a catch. I mean, literally. Uh... You tilt the book forward and nothing happens. So you pull the book all the way off the shelf and nothing happens. So you flip the book open and start riffling through the pages until you find the one with the page corner turned down. A diagram on the page shows the 
three most common unobtrusive latch mechanisms for bookshelf-based secret doors. And on closer inspection, this bookcase is using the second one. Now you can open the secret door whenever you're ready. Nice. Nice. Enter the secret door. Nice. Nice, okay. nice, 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 nice. Hey, what are you doing in... Were you seriously about to ask me what I'm doing in here? Yeah, even as I was saying it, it sounded stupid. How did you find me? I hid and watched when you came out for your smokes. Oh, that was you, huh? I thought the captain's voice didn't sound quite right. So what's the deal? Well, it's basically just what it looks like. It looks like you're hiding in this old man's house to rob him while he sleeps. In that case, it's not at all what it looks like. I'm listening. I'll admit, at first I was planning on robbing him. I figured an old sea captain must have a secret treasure, right? He wasn't a pirate. No, it turned out he's just a lonely old man with nobody to talk to. Except, well, it was old sailing buddy. So I started hanging out back here and chatting with him through the wall. He didn't find it strange. He was a little spooked at first, but once I'd gotten a handle on how the different voices should sound and learned enough to keep up with the anecdotes, he relaxed. It was kind of nice to have someone to talk to, even if the situation is kind of weird, right? So that's all? You just do this because you feel sorry for him? Yeah, well, I won't pretend I don't like having somewhere to stay rent-free, and his pension from the shipping company is pretty good. And his short-term memory is kind of bad, so he doesn't pay much attention to the fact he's buying food for two people. Mm, he's a good guy, and it's an easy life. Don't screw it up for us, okay? Wait, what is it to you anyway? I'm here about the stolen urn. Figured it out. Oh, yeah, that was probably a mistake. He mentioned the fifth sailor a few times, so I thought he might like to have the whole crew together, you know? So I looked at a random urn from that little cathedral to fill the spot. It seemed like a good idea at the time. The vicar needs it back. Okay, it'll be weird if it just vanishes, though. Can you swap it for another one? The captain doesn't open them, so he won't notice if there's no ashes in it. Fine, I'll see what I can do. Alright. I know what to do. While meandering the streets of Ocean City, you encounter a man carrying a medium-sized piece of luggage. Not brief enough to be called a briefcase, but unsuitable enough as a suitcase for more than two suits. Hey there, friend. You look like someone who appreciates a fine pair of pants. Do I? What does that even look like? Astute, discerning, even, dare I say it, perceptuous. I have never met anyone who dared say that word before. Listen, I have got a pair of pants here that's going to knock your socks off. What? He opens his suit. He opens his case and pulls out a pair of slacks that are oddly stiff and shiny. Feast your eyes on these babies. What's up with them? They're waxed, guaranteed grease proof, and they're yours if only twenty meat. Waxed slacks, plus two sleeves armor. Hmm. Okay. It's a deal. Great. This is one pair of pants you aren't gonna regret. Uh, you got an item white slacks. Phew, and that's my rent for the month dealt with. Thanks, pal. Miss Brewster's a real stick. Miss Brewster? Yeah, she runs a boarding house that me and a bunch of the other guys stay in when we're in town. If you ever need a room, you could do a lot worse. Location unlocked. Miss Miss Brewster's home for traveling salesmen. Hmm, I have a room, but maybe I'll check it out. Take one. There's plenty in here, so the vicar won't mix just one. Besides, you've earned it. You got an item burial arm. I mean, wait, hold up. Did 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 you what? return an urn and then steal an urn?
That's what that sounded like. What what just happened there? Did you go to a I got a spare urn from the basement in the Vic in St. Polycarp's and swapped it out for the urn with the ashes. Why is the rock steaming? I mean that works okay. out. Okay, now I'm going to take this urn of cremains and put it in its place at St. Polycarp's. Okay. Maybe I just need to give it to the vicar. Talk to him. Yeah, I did. Here you go. Hmm. In fact, let me... Okay, it's you. Have you found our missing ashes yet? I did. Here you go. Wonderful. I'll get this polished and reinstalled right away. Blessings upon you, my child. In fact, let me make that blessing literal. I have some holy water of St. Polycarp here somewhere. Ah, here we go. He takes out a little bottle of water and splashes some on your forehead. You got a perk. St. Polycarp's forehead. Plus one muscle. Not just the forehead. <laughs> uh, your forehead has been anointed with the blessing of St. Polycarp, the patron saint of bodybuilders. Thanks. <gasps> nice! Dang. Uh, say, whose ashes are in that urn anyway? Unfortunately, we don't know his name, but he was a sailor who washed ashore here, near here after a shipwreck. Some of the locals took him in, but he didn't survive the night, poor fellow. He was, inter he was interred here as an act of charity. Was that about 50 years ago, give or take? Oh, no, it was more like 300 years ago. Huh, interesting. Uh, huh. Yeah. Okay. I have to go somewhere else just to get away from the, the bells. Yes. Yes, my god, please. It's so awful. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's read those. Translate. Nice lady, but she only likes salesmen. Oh, well, not super useful to a non-hobo, but at least she got some translation practice. Head inside, sure. As you enter the boarding house, you discover some kind of hullabaloo or perhaps a kerfluffle. A stern-looking middle-aged lady is surrounded by six agitated men all talking over each other. Interesting. Listening. Gentlemen, I, assist, I insist you settle down at once. We won't get to the bottom of this with you all acting like panicked school children. Miss Brewster, you've got to call the cops. Ah. Uh, what this, this town calls police, I wouldn't trust to solve a jigsaw puzzle, let alone a serious crime. And I won't have these hooligans turning my house upside down. But there's there's been a, a murder. Somebody has to do something. What you can all do is go to your rooms and let me think. Good gracious. Men file up the stairs, abashed, but still fidgeting nervously. Talk to the woman. Um, excuse me. Miss Brewster sighs, exasperated. I'm sorry, I don't have any vacancies, or, well, I suppose I do, but I can't have you left the room until this whole mess has been sorted out. One of those men said something about a murder? Yes, it's absolutely ghastly. One of my lodgers was murdered in the night, and nobody heard or saw anything. I'm practically at my wit's end. Offer to help. How big are your wits that you're at their end? Lena. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I can help. My name's Greta Ren. I'm kind of an independent investigator sort of thing. Oh, like the Belgian fellow in the mystery. Oh, God. What? Hercule Poiret. Who? The Belgian fellow in the mystery novels. What? Oh, sure. Well, that's marvelous. If you can solve this mystery, I can pay you quite reasonably. Okay, that's the deal. Thank goodness. What can you tell me about the victim? He was a traveling salesman. All my lodgers are traveling salesmen. What did he sell? Oh, they come and go so frequently. I'm afraid I haven't the foggiest idea. How did he die? 
I'm not sure. The body is missing. Look, you better just go and have a look for yourself. He was in 3C. I locked the door so I don't want to mess around in there. All right. Only Miss Brewster allowed in the kitchen. Any oil paintings, pretty supporters. The radio plays music at an agreeable volume. The potted flowers saw nothing. The bathroom door is locked. <laughs> A little note next to the phone says, do not use phone. Okay, go up. To see. Two D at rack to B to A to not to be <laughs> sorry, I had to the door. You unlock the door and put the key in the secret pocket you use things that won't ever be referred to again. <clears throat> you step into room see and discover holy crap a massive pool of blood on the floor and like miss brewster said there's nobody in sight investigate fish check yourself for clues hi shredder fish do you like how we can hear the cat in the background and full of clean water Windows locked, so the killer must have come from inside the house. Nothing interesting about the bed. Yes, yeah, Shredder, we hear you. Hmm, nothing. Must be shallower than it looks. This sort of this sort of rug looks pretty ordinary. Check underneath it. You roll up the rug and whoa, what the heck? There's a crazy occult diagram underneath it. The lines and glyphs appear to have been burned onto the floor. You can see little blobs of melted candle wax at the points of the dodeca do decagram. Oh, no, I spoke correctly. And it even smells faintly of weird incense. Was this some kind of ritual killing? Maybe. Hey, like a regular old murder wasn't enough. Because it's not enough. Don't you know? Some high-heeled shoes have been, le been carelessly left in the hallway. You're not sure which aspect would upset Mrs. Brewster the most shoes. They'll be safer with you. Extra high heat. Knock on the door. It'd be best if you report back to Miss Brewster first. Okay. Oops. Okay. Go downstairs. Go down. Uh, Miss Brewster stands by the kitchen door looking stern but frazzled. Strazzle. Well, Miss Brewster, I've had a look in room C. Did you find anything? I found a huge pool of blood. It's really gross. Did you find anything else? Yes, actually. An occult ritual circle. What? Oh my goodness. You think it was some kind of black magic sacrifice? I'm afraid it looks that way. Yes, ma'am. Well, I've always felt a lodger's religion was no business of mine, but I won't stand for this one bit. Are any of your lodgers involved with the occult? Do you know? Hmm, Hi, Pop Pop. I, he just plugged it in. Yes. I do recall that one of them specializes in selling occult supplies and paraphernalia, but I'm afraid I don't remember which one. You'll have to ask around. Okay. It's really hurting my tongue. I'm sorry, Mama. We could end a little early if you want to. Do you mind? Not at all. 
Okay, we need to ask around. Help me remember. Mm -hmm. Wait a minute. Side quest. Can I write anything on there? Personal notes. Write a note. Write a note to yourself. Okay. Yes. Yeah, I just noticed that Lita's pin just gone. Uh, what All happened right. to it? I don't know. Oh. Okay. Bollocks. Oh well. Okay. That will help me uh, find out. Help me remember what I'm doing next week. Because when we go a week between games, my popcorn brain doesn't remember what in the hell we were doing. Same. Yeah, I get that. Okay. Um, but yeah, I, I would like to go ahead and end a bit early because... Um, that, that's fine, this Mama. Tempor this temporary crown has worn a sore on the side of my tongue Ow. and talking hurts. And you keep forgetting it hurts you too, so yeah. Yeah. I'm Basically... Sorry. Basically, it feels like I bit the crud out of my tongue about four times. On the side. So. I'm, I'm so sorry. Thank you, yeah. Ashen, so much for the hydrate. We will go ahead and hydrate before we raid. And I think we're going to raid Faye. You want to raid Faye and I can raid Rem? Sure. That way they both get love. That works for me. Sounds good. Thank you. Thank you for popping in. I'm so sorry that you, you're getting here right before we end. Ash, and I love when you call me a good boy. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Every time he turns to me, just eyes lit up. He's like, I got to hang out with Ash, and he called me good boy. I'm a good boy. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to go ahead and raid Faye. As always, everybody, be kind, be courteous, be awesome. I love you all so, so much, and I will see you all tomorrow. He is a very good boy. We love him very much. Nice. So just for him, please remember to take care of Matt. And Thank you. We'll see you all probably tomorrow morning, but we'll see. Bye. And just for the